Fleming uh, was inspired to work uh, in the area of uh, cures for bacterial disease for, for many years uh, before he discovered penicillin, uh, really seeing the, the devastation of infection after World War I. Uh, but the, the key day for him was uh, September 3rd, 1928, coming back from a holiday in, in August with his family and finding in the corner of his laboratory uh, some plates that had the bacterium Staphylococcus aureus growing on them. And on one of them in particular, uh, there was a fungus growing, and around the fungus there was a zone uh, where the staph, Staphylococcus had uh, been killed. And uh, discussing that with his uh, previous laboratory technician, uh, they came to the conclusion that they'd really stumbled across something uh, quite profound. And from that point on, uh, went through the process of growing up this fungus called uh, penicillin notatum and discovering within the liquid in which the, the fungus grew uh, a molecule that would kill bacteria. The antibiotics that have been developed from that uh, have been a mainstay of uh, medical practice for decades. Uh, the problem more recently has become the emergence of antibiotic resistance. So pharmaceutical companies have failed to find uh, new classes of antibiotics for a few decades now. Almost no new classes have been discovered since 1980. The low-hanging fruit has already been picked, so we need to deploy uh, modern, innovative scientific techniques uh, to try and make some breakthrough that's not been possible. Bacteria evolve. They will always evolve to any new drug that we produce against them. The lifetime of a new drug can be tens of years but nonetheless evolution progresses. So as time goes by, those drugs that we have become less and less effective. Yeah, I better. The uh, science base within pharmaceutical companies has dropped to an all-time low in antibiotic discovery. Without new antibiotics coming through, it's hard to quantify in numbers, but an example is there are six million doses of antibiotics given in UK hospitals every day. So you can see as their effectiveness dwindles, uh, the impact that's likely to have. And because it takes so long to discover new drugs and to license new drugs, there's a, a real possibility that we will run out of antibiotics in the next few years. So even minor operations will become impossible. The multidisciplinary activity we have here has enabled us to make some, some key steps forward uh, in, in some of the currently unresolved questions around the activity of penicillin and the enzymes that uh, it inhibits. So these bottles that you're seeing now, they are cultures of E. coli bacteria, which is part of our study aimed at figuring out how tuberculosis, the causative agent of TB, makes its bacterial cell walls. Here is a crystallization imaging robot. So we use this device to uh, scan for conditions in which we can grow three-dimensional uh, crystals of proteins and then with the use of an x-ray beam uh, produced by a machine next door and a vast facility called Diamond in Oxfordshire which will allow us to work out the three-dimensional structure of this protein and then figure out how it does what it does and perhaps even design drugs to stop it doing what it does. The funding we've had from the MRC has been crucial to getting us to where we are now. We started uh, with a very small grant to help bring together different scientists from across the UK and now that's blossomed to a truly international collaboration between the UK and Canada and we're starting to influence the way that both international scientists and pharmaceutical companies interact in this area of science. So uh, the MRC supporting that has, has been absolutely crucial. We're poised now to push forward with uh, a really effective drug discovery program. So we're teaming up with uh, chemists in Oxford and looking forward to some uh, large uh, grant applications to focus more on the translational aspect of the work. So moving away from the fundamental discovery, but to try and look for small molecules and potentially small molecules that could inhibit the penicillin binding proteins, uh, but also perhaps inhibit some of the resistance mechanisms at the same time. The prospects for discovering something as useful and wide-ranging as penicillin are perhaps behind us. What we might need to do in the, in the future is discover much more narrow spectrum drugs
to treat specific infections in the same way that many cancer medicines are targeted against specific cancers. Bacteria are going to be around causing infections forever. So we have to put in a long-term programme of research to think how are we going to deal with not the next generation of antibiotics but the generation after that and what new strategies can we employ to make them last longer and be more effective. So for us, being able to find a small molecule that could become a lead that companies could take on and develop, that would be uh, really the pinnacle of what we're trying to do.